Let's just talk about the bad advice genealogists keep getting. Just go play with AI for about 20 hours so you get a feel for how it works. Or worse, they get completely fooled by it. The reality is, no matter how good it is, it still needs your expertise in order to really help you. The power in AI isn't just asking it stuff. The power is in partnering with it. Let me show you how it actually works and how it can change everything. We are going to start here at the beginning with what we have told ChatGPT it is. Remember, it's artificial intelligence. It can be anyone. So we're going to tell it it's a genealogy professional in this. So step one is going to be about exactly what it is we're trying to do here. We are trying to do genealogy research. Once we have done that step, we are then going to let interview us about what we are trying to accomplish. So if we haven't been clear in the first part, the second part will help in the clarity. We definitely want ChatGPT to have all this context about what it is we are trying to do and not make assumptions. The third part, also fairly simple, it is just the research plan. It's going to give us a review of what exactly we've tried to do. It's going to break down what it thinks our goals are and then prioritize it for us and tell us exactly what to do next. Here is the part in step four where it gives us the exact record recommendations. Now note in here there aren't rare records such as Bible records in here. Everything listed is a very common, fairly easy to access. You might not find it completely digitized for you on the internet, but you do have the ability to go after these things fairly easily. The best part is, is if you haven't done these, you definitely want to do it before you do any other kind of research. And then it's going to provide the explanation. So all you do with this prompt is just put it in to ChatGPT, then it's going to kick off and start this step-by-step -step process. Here's step one. This is what I'm going to do. Here's step two, what I'm going to do. And then this is what I'm going to give you at the end. Once I have everything from you, meaning me, it's going to give you a custom three to five step plan with the specific records to look for and clear priorities. Now, how awesome is that? Rather than constantly trying to figure out what ChatGPT could help me with, specifically asking for this specific help and it can do it. So here is the research summary I gave it. It's not very long, right? It's very short. Robert Curry was born about 1826 in Pennsylvania and died 1874 in Clearfield County, PA. That's exactly what I know about him. I don't know where he was born in Pennsylvania. I just know from census records he was born in Pennsylvania. I'm trying to find his parents. Obviously, I want to go back further. The first time I find him in the census named is in 1850, where he's already married to Nancy Bloom and they've already had two children. I know that he did not enlist in the Union Army. I also know that the property that they had was in Nancy's name and her father gave it to them. That stated explicitly in the deed is actually the only proof of marriage I have for this couple. The father states, my daughter Nancy is married to Robert Curry. I also have record that Robert was sued in federal court by a sewing machine company in Connecticut. He apparently was leasing machines from this company and then giving them out to people in the community and never paying for them. There's a great story there, I'm sure, but let's just get on with the research. He then did not have an estate to leave when he died and that I have tax records that I got from Clearfield County showing him living next to a William Curry who was five years older than him prior to marriage. So this is the only other evidence I have of Robert's existence by name prior to 1850 in Clearfield County. ChatGPT comes back and tells me, great, thank you for the detailed summary. And it goes through summarizing exactly what I told it. What I love about this summary is it breaks it down in bullet points and it's very exact. I can review the facts that I gave it and make sure that we're in alignment and it didn't substitute in additional information. It reviewed my goal that I want, the time period, the place, the research plan development. It summarized the progress I've made so far and that I made a, a smart connection. I appreciated the smart part here, tracking Robert before marriage and tax records uh, with a possible relative, uh, William. Then says the current gaps here, and I didn't tell it that I've gone through all the church records that I could find in Clearfield County, but here is the step-by-step -step research plan that it gave me. Again, it is because of this one prompt. And note that this happened 
instantaneously. So step one is to confirm a connection to William Curry. And it tells me the action to take to do that. It also told me to go through and find all the Curry families in 1830 and 1840 in Clearfield County. It also wanted me to trace Nancy Bloom's family further, which is also a great idea. And then to go through more of the court records in Clearfield. Here are the record recommendations and it telling me exactly what to do. It gave me five steps, 1830, 1840 census, which is perfect for Curry households and look for males that would be about Robert or William's ages. Brilliant. I didn't think of that. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that, but I'm definitely going to do that step. William Curry probate and land records. Again, this is about investigating William. And then uh, again, the guardianship and orphans court records and county tax records some more. So look for more Curry's and try to establish neighborhood patterns and household groupings. So this is really great. Then it gives me some methodology, make a timeline spreadsheet, look for coverage in newspapers, and also to do some cluster research in terms of this. And then it offers a course to help me further. But this is the power of one good prompt. I have a full research plan, step-by-step, and I have clarity. Now, why this prompt works, especially for people new to AI, is you've assigned AI a role, it clearly knows what hat it's wearing, and you clearly know also your role in what you're doing interacting with the AI. You also have context. It's not starting from scratch, and you're not starting from scratch. You've given clarity. You know exactly what you want, and you know that AI knows exactly what you want. There's structure in terms of how you're asking, and how you're receiving the information. And there's boundaries where you don't get make-believe stuff back. So this is exactly like working with an, a research assistant and you are really the boss of AI. So if you've been dabbling in artificial intelligence for your genealogy research or your writing and you're feeling really unsure about what it could actually do, I want to invite you into a community, Chronicle Makers, where I have courses called AI fundamentals for genealogists. These are short beginner friendly courses that are self-paced and self-guided that will take you through that first 20 hours of using artificial intelligence step by step with video instruction and give you a whole series of prompts just like this one that will help you use AI as a partner. I have a waitlist to the community in the link to the description below. And if you're interested in joining, sign up for the waitlist because I'm trying to even get a sense if people are interested in something like this. Go ahead and get on the waitlist and I'll give you more details. And let's bring clarity, not chaos, to genealogy research with AI. And I'll see you in the next video.